Hey, I'm Allie from Infragistics, and I'm here to show you how you can bind data by using our Ignite UI controls. So let's get started. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to bind any server-side data source to the Infragistics grid control using the IG data source control. I'm going to go ahead and create a new project, following the same pattern we have done in previous videos. We will create a new web project. Again, you can use any type of editor to do this. We are strictly working with HTML. I'm going to add a new HTML page to my project called Customers. As we've done before, there are a couple of ways you can get the script references to enable this page to actually use the Ignite UI controls and jQuery UI library. You can simply go to igniteui.com and copy right from the website all of the script references you need. What I did is I actually added a little handy helper in my toolbox, so I can just drag them out. We don't have to add any additional files to your project. Just use a global Infragistics CDN. Let's go ahead and add a script tag. What I'm going to do first is start out by adding a couple of things. I'm going to drag a simple IG grid control, like we've done in the past. We actually have a couple of extra script tags there, so let's go ahead and delete those. Here's my IG grid. Actually, it should look very familiar to you. The IG grid is going to be bound to an HTML element called grid. Let's go ahead and add a table named grid to the body of the page. So now, whatever we do to this, it will affect this. So if we add data to this grid, it will affect this grid. That's how we're lighting up the application with just your existing HTML elements with the Ignite UI controls. What I want to do is get data from the server displayed in this grid. So the first thing that I want to do is add the URL endpoint, which is the location of our OData source that we will need to bind our controls. So let's add our URL where we've got the Northwind data source. You can also check out odata.org, which has a bunch of data sources you can use and experiment with them on your own site. So there's a lot of odata feeds, but the point is, I don't have static data in my page, I'm getting real data from a server endpoint. The next thing I want to do is create an instance of the IG data source control. I'm going to create a variable, and I'm going to create a new instance of the IG data source control. So in this case, is going to be the JSONP data source. The JSONP data source can expect a data array back. What I'm going to do with that is bind it to my grid. It's that simple. Let's go ahead and just set this up. The data source for this particular control is going to be the URL that we've set up and the response data key, which is very important because that's what we're getting back in the JSON array. So it's going to look in a file for its response data feed, and that's what it will put into the data source and parse for you. So you don't have to worry about any of this parsing yourself. So let's set the response data key to D results. Here we have our D results and we're done. We have our data source set up, it's that easy. At this point, when the page runs, once we get to here, we've already gone through the server, gotten all the employees' data in this table, and it's in the response data key, D results, using the IG data source. All of the parsing is done for you, so then you can start to work with this data yourself on the page. What we wanna do is tell the grid to actually use this data. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to tell the grid that it needs to auto-generate columns. When this is set to true, the grid will inspect the data that's coming in, that it's bound to, and it will add column headers for each one of those items. Let's tell it to use the response data for the results of this, just like we did before. And finally, we're going to tell it the data source to use to bind it to JSONP, the data source that we created at the top of the page. And that's all we need to do. So if we hit save and we go ahead and run this in our browser, we have a beautiful page, which has all of the employee data that we wanted from the server. Just like that, with a few lines of code, I've gone to a server, gotten some data, and rendered it in a page. Even though it was super easy, it looks a little sloppy. 
I can't really work with the page rendered like this. What I really want to do is make a nice and neat customer list. So let's go ahead and customize the row template. So when we render it next time, it looks better. So let's close out of this browser. In the grid, what you can do is, you can tell it what columns that you want to actually display when it renders. There are a couple of ways to minimize the number of displayed columns. You can add a query to your RESTful call to the server by modifying the URI, so it will select and then list out the column index you want. We have 10 to 12 columns. There are like 9 to 10 rows of data, so it's a little overkill to do that. What we're going to do is actually work within the grid itself. The first thing I want to do is tell the grid not to auto-generate columns. I'm going to set false on this, and I'm going to add a couple of lines here. I'm just going to drag out our employee's row template that I've already set up. This is pretty straightforward and simple. I dragged five lines of JavaScript out, but it's really simple. All we're doing here is we're defining the columns that we want to display. We have a columns collection, and in the columns collection, I want to display a picture, the name, and the title. What I can do here is set the text of the column, and then the key, which maps to the column name in the data source. Infragistics ships a templating engine, and we support with JS render templating. You have very flexible ways to do any sort of templating to rows and any of the data bound controls. What I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out the normal TD in my table with this custom row template, and this custom row template is actually going to add an image attribute in the first cell. In the second cell, I'm going to go ahead and add the name, and in the third cell, I'm going to go ahead and add the title. Name and title is pretty straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and bind to those keys. But this is where it gets interesting, where I'm actually changing the string value to an HTML element, which is an image. Now, if we save this and I just run it again, you'll see that we have a different view of our customers now. Make it a little bit smaller so you can see it on the screen. And I have the image along with the name and the title. And just like that, in a few minutes, you have real server data coming down to the grid with some custom row templating and a great experience for your end users. So that's what's in development.